Hey, I'm Sturdy McKee, and uh, we just did a Facebook Live Q&A, primarily about going out of network, but we got into a couple other things and questions and stuff. I just did that with Jared Carter, uh, and a big you know thanks to Jared. But Eric, this is for you. One of your questions, one of your questions was, what metrics should I track in my practice? I want to go over a couple things uh, that you can start to gather. So revenue, we're going to look for revenue. You want your overall revenue for your practice, and we're going to kind of assume that we're working around four to five FTE therapists and stuff for later, okay? And FTE, well, that's gonna be another another video, but that's your capacity, full-time equivalent therapist, but I'm not so worried about um, how many hours a week they work versus how many hours a week or what kind of, uh, you know, productivity you expect, how, how many visits and how many hours of, of uh, patient care they're doing. So if I've got a manager that's at 85%, of the patient care time of a full-time staff therapist so they have the time to manage, they're 0.85 on my calculations, okay? They're not 1.0 even though they're a, they're a full-time employee, okay? So anyway, we're going back to revenue. We want our revenue, all the revenue. You can break it down by different lines. I have clients that break down the patient portions and the insurance portions and stuff. If that's useful to you, that's great, but we're just really looking for the overall revenue. Likewise, if you have other areas like wellness or lasers or something else, um, not sharks with lasers, but you know, lasers, um, then you can track that by different light items and that would be useful because you're gonna look at capacity and usage and all that type of stuff later too. But we're really looking like that, we'll just take about straight, straight up PT uh, clinic here and, and work on revenue. Then we want all our expenses and all our expenses and you can break those down into two subcategories. Okay, they're useful and we're gonna call it COGS, okay, and overhead. And for our purpose, it's gonna define these, okay? Define them a little different. This isn't gap principles. Your accountant's gonna be like, I don't know. This isn't for tax purposes. This is for management and planning and really kind of figuring out, you know, making decisions and stuff and figuring out how, where things are going. So what we're gonna define these as for our purposes is COGS is all your personnel expenses because you're a service business. Everything, you know, everybody in the, in the business serves those patients and those customers. So that's part of your cost of your goods sold. Okay, also uh, if you have billing, so your billing staff or if you outsource it, the percentages and stuff that you pay to your billing company go into the COGS. And part of that reason is as your visits go up and down and stuff, those expenses should go up and down. Um, even if, you're, if your staff is salaried, if you're going to add a bunch more new patients through whatever channel, you're going to have to add additional staff, so you're going to see that expense increase and go up. Okay, overhead is everything else. So the cool thing is you can calculate one of these. You don't have to do both, right? You got all your expenses, you calculate one of these, and then you do the subtraction, the remainder is the other bucket, okay? So your overhead though is, is all your regular kind of fixed expenses. So your IT, your utilities, your internet, um, your rent, your insurance, your uh, taxes, business taxes, uh, everything else that comes out of there, that's gonna go into your overhead. So the thing about this is your overhead should be relatively fixed, relatively predictable, and then your COGS is gonna be uh, really indicated more by the visits and the staff because your billing expense is gonna go up and down, your uh, staff numbers might increase when you have, if you have seasonal uh, work, that type of thing. So let's just make sure that you're, you're cool with both of those two different buckets. The other ones we're gonna look at here, forgive me, um, are visits. Okay, you need to know the total number of visits and then the new patient number that you have there. The units you bill, if you're billing in a traditional model of CBT codes and stuff, knowing that you have CMS and AMA and all that stuff, but we're gonna look at the number of units being billed and then the number of leads. And the number of leads, by the way, are really, uh, that's everybody who inquires about your service. That gets confusing sometimes for some people in healthcare. Um, it's anybody who's interested and has inquired about your services. So whether they attended a workshop or they came to a talk you gave or they called on the phone and asked about you know, coming to see you or sent an email asking information, those people are all leads. We wanna capture that information if we can. And we wanna look at the numbers. So let's go through why we want these numbers because from these, we can then start to do all these calculations and, the, and, and these relationships to come about and then that can help you make better decisions in your business because it's not just about the metrics you're tracking, it's about what you're gonna do with that and what that's gonna inform so that you can then make you know, better decisions about your business and, and how, to, how to take that forward. So let's use this one, visits per case. Okay, visits per case. Visits per case or visits per new patient is how you calculate it. That's gonna bounce around a bit month to month. 
Okay, we're not so not quite so concerned about month to month. We want like the average for the year. We want the average over a three month period because that's gonna to tend to smooth out. But if you get a few more new patients, it'll make your visits per case look like it dropped off. If you get a few more visits and fewer new patients, it's gonna make your visits per case look like it's go up, goes up. But what you're really looking for is not so much to benchmark it, benchmark it against other practices and stuff. You're looking at your therapist's plans of care. And if they're written appropriately and they're writing for the best, most efficient plans of care, what we want is for the visits per case, the number that people actually show up for, to match up with what our therapists are recommending and writing for. So if you, what you may find if you track this by individual therapist is that some of your therapists are high, some are low, uh, you know, they're, they're all over the place. And you wanna make sure that they're, number one, they're making good clinical decisions. And then number two, people are showing up for all of the visits that, that they agreed were gonna help that person get to their goals and stuff. Um, if they're not and you find some outliers, you then need to go go drill down, figure out why that is. So some therapists, particularly some younger therapists, and uh, my apologies in advance if anybody is, but you know we get better at communicating and really listening to our patients and making sure we're doing the right thing by them with more experience. Um, so you might find that somebody's seeing people for a, a, a few few lower visits per case on average. Um, than someone else with more experience. And what you want to figure out is, is that the clinical decision making what they're writing for? Or is that communicating? Is that really making sure that we got patient buy-in? That, that we're really you know, tying that back into the end result that the patient wants and that they understand why they're coming in and that they're really clear on that and they're able to consistently you know, get there and do that. So we want that number to, to match up with our plan secure as written. Here's another one, units per visit, okay. And this is going to vary by practice, okay? So it completely vary. So it depends on how much time you're spending with your patients. It depends on how many of them are Medicare. I mean, if you're seeing Medicare patients for 30 minutes, then you're going to expect your units per visit to be 2.0, right? That's the CMS rules. But if you're under AMA rules with some of your other contracts and stuff, and you're seeing people for a little bit longer, you may, and, and again, we're going back to watching and actually looking at the documentation, making sure your, your therapists are documenting the actual time they're doing each each activity and linking that to a code and putting that out but let's say that your target not benchmarked against a bunch of other people but your target that you've solved for for in your practice is 3.85 okay if it's 3.85 then what you want to do is go back to the process and make sure people are billing you know the right number of minutes for the right thing and and documenting all the time and billing for all the time the patients there too our margins are already so so tight that if when we underbill, it just it hurts everybody because you know you gotta be able to pay the bills to stay in business to provide care to the people in the future and stuff too. All right. So now if we look at this and let's say your target's 3.85, but you're actually at your therapists are at 3.6. What you're going to want to look at is the process and what they're what they're doing. Drill down, look at the minutes, look at what they're doing, make sure that they're that they're following through. If you design this properly and 3.8 really is the target. And they're hitting 3.6 what you may find are some therapists are down at 3.4 and it's bringing the average down um, or there's some variability and maybe somebody just had a bad week and wasn't documenting and writing up everything so you want to track those numbers and make sure that you're you're consistently here and look at that difference for a second too because if you're operating at a difference of you know 0.25 units per visit that is of 3.6.25 is almost 7%, so like 6.94, I think, uh, percent. So you, these are people that you're already seeing. This is work that you're already doing. So if you're managing that and making sure that that's happening, then that right there, if it's worth, let's six, we'll call it 7%, um, but 6.94%, 7%, 7%, if you have a million dollar business, 7% is $70,000. That's $70,000 that you might not be realizing for work you're already doing. Okay, so you start to see the reason for looking at your metrics. And let's say that you're a solo practice and you're bringing in $225,000, $250,000 in revenue, but there's a 7% discrepancy just because you aren't you know, dialed in and doing it. 7% of a quarter million dollars is still one fourth of 70. What's that? $17,000, $18,000. And again, there's no additional expense there. That's just managing it well and executing well and following the process. So, you know, $18,000, that hits your bottom line. That's, that's literally 
profit that's income and and making a profit consistently is one of the biggest challenges you'll face particularly in this business in this industry so these are just a couple of things you can use we can go into leads leads will show you the efficacy of your marketing programs the efforts are they paying off if you're instituting a new marketing program you're spending an extra four thousand dollars a month how many more leads do you need what's your conversion rate conversion rate means the number of leads that turn into new patients so if your conversion rate is at 80 percent you can backwards calculate how many how many leads do i need to generate how many new patients to pay for the new marketing program and initiative when somebody's pitching you and you know telling you what you need to spend and all these benchmarks, like you gotta spend 5% of your revenue or 10% of your revenue. Look, if you're on a 10% profit margin, they're asking you to spend 5% more of your revenue, there better be an ROI. As Jack Daly says, there are no expenses in business, there are only investments, all right? So if you're gonna spend more on marketing or outreach or any programs, that's an investment. It needs to turn back around into something that pays and, and fuels your business, okay? So leads, you gotta start capturing that. New patients, you're going to want that number. Units, total number of visits, revenue, expenses. You can start to break it down. You can start to do some calculations. If you're finding yourself a little overwhelmed or what have you, if you can collect these over here, forget about all this stuff, okay? Just forget about that. If you can do this, and remember, you only need to do one of these two, okay, from your QuickBooks or P&L. If you want to send that to me broken down by month for the last four months or better yet last year and then this year to date um, i can give you back some information and happy to do so on what you might consider you know to improve what, what the potential might be to improve your revenue improve your profit using your numbers real numbers um, might have some questions for you there might be some homework okay just a heads up but this is an area where managing a bit more efficiently, knowing what to do in your practice, knowing what the metrics, not only what you should collect, but what they start to mean, and then what you can do with them next, can have huge impacts on your bottom line, and your security, the longevity of your business, and, and only wish you the, 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 the greatest success. So hit me up. If you need anything, over at sturdymckee.com. If there's any way you think I might be able to help you. Take it easy.